starting real small in a breeder box. These are OB Borlei. You can see a female in the background there. Really small, barely even a half an inch. Another breeder box here. These are Alonicara uh, Flavescent split gene. So the the dad was the albino and a, the mother was a standard flavescent. This is a 20 tall, obviously a lot of activity, uh, two sponges, some moss balls. The bulk of the fish in here are OB Borlei. Um, you'll see some wider looking fish. Those are Alonicara albino flavescent peacocks. There's also some silver fish in here with the three dots. There's one all right there if you can see them. Those are Autopharynx Aromarginatus orange cap Mara rocks. Easy for me to say. Also in here, if I can find you a few, I've got my first group of Bucochromus nototania from my F1 breeders. There's one right there in the middle. As they get bigger, they'll be much, much easier to see. And then over here in the tumbler, I've got some split gene Alonicara flavescent, which is basically the male is an, an albino and the female uh, was your standard peacock. Here is a 29 gallon. I'm gonna convince them to come out using food. In this aquarium, I've got some Malawi gar that were bred here. I've got some split gene uh, fluorescent peacocks. And I think I've got a few albino peacocks in here as well that are uh, fluorescents. These are all really, really valuable fish for what I do in this fish room as far as breeding goes. So I've kind of thinned them out a bit and just let them chill out in this aquarium. Could I fit a lot more fish in here? Of course. But I kind of want to give these guys the, the royal treatment as far as not getting completely overwhelmed and overcrowded. The only downside when you do that, when you thin them out quite a bit, is that uh, they tend to want to hide a bit more so they won't be in here much longer when i move them i'll do another video that shows them significantly better here is a 40 gallon with a, a heck of a lot going on uh, i got four sponges in here the red kind of comes from the tint of the light as well as the red rocks as well as uh, the type of fish that are in here so the heavy bulk of these fish are ob borlei uh, these have all been born here. In this tank, they range from half an inch to about an inch and a half and don't necessarily bother each other. Pretty heavily stocked as far as the Borley I go. Also, if you look closely, I do have 10 uh, Malawi Barracuda. Uh, specific species are the Esox Yellowfin. They kind of hang out to the back. They look like tiny minnows now, but they're going to grow significantly faster than these OB Borlei and they're going to be some pretty good sized fish, like a foot long fairly easily. Not a fish really sought after for their color, but a fish fought after uh, for their shape. This tank is obviously not for looks. <laughs> this is a 40 gallon um, in here. These are Aristochromus christii, I think 15, that were that were bred here from my group. They're about two and a half to three inch now. The location of this tank is a little bit hidden, so they got used to not seeing people very often. So when I come around, they kind of hide. And uh, it's really not motivated me to keep the glass particularly clean because they, they hide from me anyway, so. Uh, these will probably be sold fairly soon, so whoever gets them, they'll be able to see them much, much better. Here's the 75 gallon. In here I have my albino fluorescent breeding group, along with uh, some standard fluorescent females to get some split gene fry. Probably the nicest peacock I've ever owned. 
almost the color of a yellow highlighter if you get to see them in person. I do have some kind of excess decor in this tank and that's only because when he breeds uh, the male gets a little bit pushy with the females so this gives them plenty of room to hide from him and, and kind of hang out and not be harassed you know, while he's breeding with a different female. This is a standard 125 gallon. Uh, there's an interesting mix of fish in here, as you will see. We'll go closer in just a second. Um, a lot of holding females in there as well. What I have is a breeding group of OB Borlei. Uh, pretty easy to see which are those. I have a group of 12 F1 Buchochromis heterotania. You'll be able to see some males as we zoom in here. And also I've got a couple Buchochromis lepturus green. The one right there in the middle that's causing a problem. That is a male that is just. I figured I put him in here for timeout because he was chasing females in the 300 gallon, which you'll see soon, but he's been just as bad here. Uh, really nice looking fish, other than his uh, right eye is a bit, a bit funky. Let's get a little closer here. Just to get a better view of some of the fish, you can see there's a left to her screen, looks fine from that angle. And then you see him this way, he's got like a, a permanently bulged out eye. Still good to use as a breeder or anything like that, but not necessarily a show fish with the damaged eye. There is the male OB Borlei, my breeder male. One of several that I have. He's kind of the, he's the go-to. At any given time, I have this. One, two, three. Females are holding all the time from him. The Buchochromis heterotania, they start off as a navy fish, uh, being the males they do. They end up being bright blue, but they start off navy. So you can see a few of these have darker faces, those are your males. Um, just the brownish silver face, that's the females. Also in here I do have a few Aristochromis christii. Uh, they were born here, just kind of growing them up for fun, see what they turn into. But in all honesty, I will probably sell those. Uh, I do have a few pieces of driftwood, just for fun. Other than that, I've just left the substrate open to encourage breeding. 125 gallon. Uh, the background is universal rocks. The rocks are universal rocks. The plants are EliteCyclids.com. And I'm filtering this with a Fluvial FX6, an FX4, and I've also got an AquaClear uh, 110. Just kind of as a backup filter for whatever tank may need it. A lot of different fish in here. Um, I've got a breeding group of Aro Marginatus orange cap. You can see the male there at the top. And we'll zoom in in just a second. I've got a trio of Lethronops Candy Island. I have four Cyanochromis Fryeri F1 that were born here a little bit ago. I've got seven Nimbochromis Venustus. Um, and I've got 25 Albino Dragon Blood. And what you see in here that is OB, those are OB Borlei that were. They were born here, I just want to grow out in a larger tank and see what kind of color morphs I can get. Zooming in a bit on the fish, the albino dragon bloods have just really shown off a lot of color at a very early age, uh, to the point it's hard to get it to show accurately under this, under this light itself. That's probably what I think is going to be the dominant male. And they've actually already bred in here once or twice, and he's been uh, he's been the male that's taking care of that. You can see some your everyday Venustus got seven of those here. Um, the Otto Pharynx Aro Marginatus Orange Cap. There's the breeder male, two males and four females in here. And then you can see that's uh, that's one of the male fryer eye that I've got growing out, born here probably eight months ago something like that. And there's just a collection of some of my own OB bore that, that I've held on to and I want to see if I can encourage to get a little more white in my OB line. Here is my 300 gallon. 
the final aquarium of this fish room tour. This is certainly my favorite tank. Uh, this is the aquarium that if I could only keep one, most certainly I would keep this. Uh, so let's kind of go through what is involved with the tank itself and then the actual species of fish. So the setup itself, um, this is a custom made tank and stand from glasscages.com. Uh, I really enjoyed the process of buying from them and what I found to be most valuable is that you can go on their website and you can actually build your own setup and get a finalized cost without even having to speak to anybody. So if you're in the market for a new tank, whether you want to buy from them or not, um, I do encourage you to check out their website. It's a really nice tool to use to compare and uh, contrast tank sizes, tank costs, and make sure you get exactly what you want. So make sure and check that out. Really good tool for any fish keeper who wants a new tank. As far as this tank itself, this is an eight foot long from glass cages. It is 30 inches front to back. Um, I do have a low iron front glass panel. It's a little bit clearer. I don't think it's a necessity though. Uh, the main rock there in the middle, that is from universalrocks.com. It is a feature rock, not a 3D background. So if you like that, uh, if you go searching in the 3D background section on their site, you're not gonna find it. Uh, the other rocks in the tank are from aquadecor.com and the plants themselves are from EliteCichlids.com. They are artificial. Uh, if you like anything on their site, you can use promo code ADAMC, all lowercase, and you'll get uh, a discount on your order. This tank is filtered by four Fluval FX6 canisters. I get it, you'll ask a tank this size, how do you not have a sump? Well, I got this tank because my 220 before it, in the middle of the night, burst. So I was not expecting to have to you know, fork out money for a new tank. Uh, I wanted to do it. I was happy to do it, you know, to get a tank this size, but I already had all the canisters that, you know, I knew could filter this tank. So it was, at the moment, I decided to just not buy a sump, uh, not drill this tank and just use what I had. Looking back now, I probably would have gotten a sump to do it again, but, you know, when you're, when you're forced to shell out thousands you weren't expecting, it's, it's a little bit of a, a tougher angle to to convince yourself to spend even more money if you don't technically have to. So let's take a look at the fish in the 300 here. Um, the group with the largest numbers is a group of Buchochromus leptoris green. I've got a mix of males and females. There's the breeder male over there to the top left. Sort of gives you an idea how big those fish get and that he's almost 10 inches now and just started getting some color like a month ago big fish need a big tank especially for breeding um, I've got some OB Borlei in here these are backup males for my breeding group I've got a standard Borlei um, that is to inject a little bit of red into my OB breeding group I've got a group of F1 Buchochromus nodotania there's the male on the top left some of the females along the top one male and four female group of Tanial Lethernop Pro Orbitalis, uh, the giant Lethernop. There's the male right there. A really, really beautiful fish. I've got a male and five females in here. Uh, but that is a fish that if you just want some color on it, it's not a great addition to an all male tank if you don't have females. Um, otherwise, they'll spend a lot of time just being completely silver and you probably won't really enjoy them. Over here on the top left, that is a Champ Tourist Green. That is a hybrid that I accidentally had occur here between a Malawi Trout and a Buchochromus Leptoris Green. Um, the fish itself, they turned out incredible, which I didn't expect, and the demand for them has been um, completely off the charts. Um, I did move all of them to southeastcichlids.com, so if you're looking to have one, uh, that's where you're going to check. I don't have any more of them currently in-house, so he'd be the guy you would want to go to. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Um, really enjoy keeping the fish and enjoy sharing them. So any questions you have, any video ideas, anything like that, certainly let me know. One of the biggest questions I have on this 300 is you've got multiple breeding groups in here. Um, how are you certain they won't crossbreed? Uh, I'm not certain and they do crossbreed. Um, it definitely absolutely happens. Uh, so for someone like me that is a breeder and does sell fry, 
Yeah, that's the reason I don't sell any fry basically under inch, inch and a half is because I want to make sure they're pure, you know, before they leave the house here. So uh, around that one inch, it gets pretty easy to see if you've got a pure strain, you know, or a, uh, a cross group of fry. So I hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time.